is David Vanderbilt. I'm at Rutgers University in New Jersey. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how to find materials realizations of topological insulators. Um, first, uh, I have a little chart here that summarizes <coughs> some of the kinds of topological insulators. Uh, up to now in the course, uh, as I understand, you've been focusing on two-dimensional topological insulators, the churn insulator epitomized by the Haldane model, and the quantum spin hole insulator, uh, which is a kind of a doubled time reversal invariant version uh, of that. Uh, in this segment, you'll be learning more about three-dimensional uh, strong topological insulators, which are also uh, non-magnetic materials uh, with um, time reversal symmetry. Uh, we can fill out this chart by also having here uh, churn crystals, but I've written a, a question mark because the three-dimensional version of churn insulators, uh, while they can exist in, in principle, we're still working very hard on realizations of this. Um, in fact, let me just review the uh, history. Uh, since the field of topological insulators began almost 10 years ago, relatively quickly uh, we found uh, experimental examples of the quantum spin hole effect in um, cadmium mercury telluride inversion layers and strong topological insulators. The dominant materials are in the bismuth selenide and bismuth uh, telluride class. Uh, the uh, churn insulator uh, concept was introduced by Haldane um, almost 30 years ago, and it wasn't until 2013 that experimentally the first realization of this uh, was found. Um, uh, these materials uh, have uh, substantial uh, band gaps. The bismuth selenide uh, class materials have a band gap of uh, half an electron volt. Uh, by making ultra thin films of these, doping them with uh, magnetic impurities, and gating them properly, the Tsinghua group in China was able to de demonstrate churn insulator behavior in 2013 for the first time. But uh, this strategy gives you uh, very narrow uh, band gaps. And so the uh, uh, quantization, approximate quantization of the um, uh, churn response uh, was only seen below about one degree Kelvin. So we'd like to find uh, higher temperature, ideally room temperature examples of uh, this class of materials. So <clears throat> let's suppose that we wanted to find uh, a new kind of strong topological insulator. The bismuth selenide class is good, but it has some problems. For example, uh, the bulk conductivity is not as low as one would like. It tends to be leaky, and therefore measurements of the transport properties of the surface states are uh, complicated, for example. So anyway, we'd like to uh, find new materials realizations. What do we need in order to find something like this? Uh, first of all, it has to be an insulator, and that means it has to have a band gap. We'd like it to have a band gap of, let's say, uh, uh, greater than uh, or equal to a quarter of an electron volt. Uh, that's about uh, 10 times room temperature when you convert room temperature to energy by Boltzmann's constant. So that would mean that uh, the number of thermally excited precarriers is e to the minus 10. That's a good rule of thumb for a uh, robust insulator. So we'd like to have a band gap of, let's say, uh, a quarter of an, of an electron volt or more, but it can't have a band gap that's too large. And the reason has to do with spin-orbit interaction. The spin-orbit interaction is critical for creating this uh, state, and the strength of the spin-orbit interaction um, is uh, only up to about one electron volt. And so if I had something that uh, had a, a, a band gap of two electron volts, I can tell you that it's not going to be a strong topological insulator. So let me explain this a little better. First, with respect to the uh, strength of the spin-orbit interaction, I have a periodic table here that we'll just look at briefly. It's a little bit of a peculiar periodic table because it's illustrated with uh, desserts, so that, for example, osmium is Oreos, and uh, F is flan, and so on. But ignoring that, I just want to basically point to parts of the periodic table the strength of the spin-orbit interaction for the light atoms is, is tiny. It's a few milli electron volts. It uh, comes from a relativistic motion of the electrons in the core of the atom, which is more or less absent for light atoms. As you get down to, um, let's say, germanium, it's about a tenth of an electron volt. As you get down to, let's say, tellurium, it's maybe uh, getting up to half an electron volt. And by the time you get to lead and bismuth, uh, it's approaching one electron volt. Uh, but you need to have this uh, spin-orbit interaction because we know that if the spin-orbit interaction were zero 
any insulator would be a normal insulator. It would not be a strong topological insulator. And so the way you can think about it is this. If I start the material from the state where the spin orbit interaction is set to zero. So theoretically, I can uh, adjust the strength of the spin orbit interaction for a given material like bismuth selenide. If I crank up the strength of the spin orbit interaction, uh, then it starts out being a normal insulator, or possibly a normal metal, but let's say a normal insulator. At some point, the band gap closes and opens again, and when it opens, it opens into the topological insulator phase. But the amount by which these bands can be manipulated is limited by the strength of the spin orbit interaction. So uh, let's say if the heaviest thing in the compound is tellurium, that's half an electron volt. That's really a maximum. And so you're never going to be able to manipulate the bands by more than that. Um, so that's the reason why uh, we're typically looking at materials that have gaps from about a quarter of an electron volt to a half to three quarters of an electron volt. Um, that's what we're likely to find. Uh, another concept is uh, band inversions. So the way that this um, comes about, that you have a strong topological insulator, is that uh, at one point in the B1 zone, uh, usually one of the high symmetry points, there are two states of different symmetry uh, whose arrangement without spin orbit interaction gets reversed when you turn on spin orbit interaction. So in the bismuth selenide class, this happens at the gamma point, and it comes, uh, it's built out of these quintuple layers, and you have states that are even an odd parity with respect to the center of the slab that cross as you turn on spin orbit interaction. Um, so that's uh, another uh, feature that we usually look for uh, in trying to uh, arrive at uh, topological insulator materials. Uh, it's not, um, uh, well, yeah, it's not absolutely uh, required that that, that, but almost all the materials that we know about uh, follow that uh, follow that scenario. Okay, so um, if we're looking for strong topological insulators, we want to look for materials that are coming from the bottom part of the periodic table, and so uh, the calcogenides involving uh, antimony, tellurium, bismuth, lead, and so on are uh, most of the materials that uh, people are are, are looking. Um, let me change gears then and talk a little bit about the uh, search for higher temperature uh, churn insulators. In this case, again, it has to be an insulator, uh, sort of the same rule of thumb. If we want it to be working at room temperature, we'd like a gap between about a quarter and three quarters of an electron volt because it's going to be strong spin orbit that's responsible for arranging this, and it has to be time reversal broken, so it has to be uh, a ferromagnet. It has to be a ferromagnetic insulator. Unfortunately, there aren't all that many ferromagnetic insulators at room temperature in nature, but there are enough, uh, there are some, and so there's enough that we have a reasonable uh, search space. Okay, so again, uh, why is time reversal, I'm sorry, why is spin orbit interaction uh, needed in, in, in this case? Well, the basic idea here is that you're going to have a strong magnetic state, so the spin up and spin down bands are, let's say, separated. Let's say the spin-up bands are uh, topically normal, topologically normal, have a churn number of zero. The spin-down bands have, have a churn number of one. Then that system would be uh, a churn insulator. Uh, in order for this uh, spin-down band to have a churn number of one, it has to have broken time reversal symmetry. Well, you could say there's already broken time reversal symmetry because of the spin separation, because of the exchange interaction on the spins. And in fact, uh, all materials, that magnetic materials that we know of, this is how the magnetism comes about. It comes about in the spin sector. You get this exchange uh, splitting, which uh, separates the, the up and down spins in energy to some degree. Uh, but if there's no spin orbit interaction, this uh, time reversal breaking in the spin sector never gets communicated to the orbital sector. So if there's no time reversal symmetry, if there's no um, spin orbit coupling, then this uh, manifold of uh, uh, electrons in one spin channel that has a, a, cannot have a non-zero churn number because it sees an effective Hamiltonian that's real. Only when you turn on the spin orbit interaction does it see an effective Hamiltonian that's complex, like the one that's in the Haldane model. So that's why you need uh, strong spin orbit in this case as well. There's a possible out. Some people have discussed the possibility that electron-electron interactions could possibly break time reversal symmetry directly in the orbital sector instead of the spin sector. 
Uh, if that were true, then we wouldn't need time reversal symmetry, but that's kind of a, a wild speculation at the, at the moment, I think. Okay, so again, um, uh, coming back to trying to, re to realize uh, this case, since it's a two-dimensional system, we really do have a lot of uh, design space here. Uh, you could have something which is, let's say, at the interface between two materials, let's say between a, a magnetic material and a material with strong spin orbit. You could have something on graphene, so people have talked about decorating graphene with magnetic ions and, and lead and bismuth. Uh, we've done some work in our group where we've uh, looked at the possibility of taking uh, insulating magnetic uh, substrates and putting some uh, monolayer or fraction of a monolayer of heavy atoms like lead or bismuth uh, on, the, on the surface. Uh, uh, other people have looked at taking uh, uh, 5D oxides. So the 3D uh, materials tend to be strongly magnetic, 4D less so, 5D somewhat less so, but there are still magnetic 5D elements, and the 5D elements also come with pretty strong spin orbit interaction. So if you can arrange, let's say, for a plane of uh, 5D uh, magnetic ions to exist inside some material, this is another strategy that, that people have talked about. So I think it's an interesting uh, field. We're still in the early days. Uh, so far, um, the highest temperature churn insulator that we have is under one degree Kelvin, but I'm sure that over the next five to 10 years, we'll find um, others and, and, and greatly uh, raise, that, uh, raise that limit. Whether we'll ever get to room temperature or not, I don't know. Uh, uh, we don't have room temperature superconductors yet either, uh, so uh, maybe we have a long way to go. Uh, in any case, uh, let me leave it here uh, for the moment, and I'll come back at the end of the segment and say 